Hello, welcome to Health News. I am Jomi Otaibi. I guess at some point you may have heard about sickle cell anemia or seen someone living with the condition. If you have or not, here's an opportunity to learn more on how sickle cell comes about and the effective ways to manage it and increase the quality and quantity of life of those living with sickle cell disorder. Three quarters of sickle cell cases are set to occur in Africa. A World Health Organization report estimates that around 2% of newborns in Nigeria are affected by sickle cell anemia. What are the facts behind sickle cell disorder? Take a look at this report. The fact about sickle cell disorder is that it is an inherited blood condition which is acquired from parents who are both carriers of hemoglobin AS. This creates a 25% chance of having a child with sickle cell anemia. Any condition that requires one living with it for life, the person has to be able to acclimatize, if you like, to that condition and taking care of themselves. So it's genetic counseling is what the, um, lay, where they lay out everything for that client, for care, for him, personal care. Well, having said that, the person may also want to have children, which is most, what most of us aspire to, in which case it's important to say, look, you're, you're likely to have children who have sickle cell, and these are the, these are the options open to you, and you choose your, your own path. The teaching hospitals, the, anywhere you have clinics where sickle cell patients are looked after, there's need for genetic counseling. So it's not only, you don't need a center, specifically meant for genetic counseling. Sickle cell is a disorder that affects the red blood cells, which help transport oxygen from the lungs to the rest of the body. Normally, red blood cells are found around and flexible, so they can travel freely through the narrow blood vessels. But when the condition is present, the red blood cells assume an abnormal, rigid, sickle shape, which trigger pains. <laughs> <laughs> Symptoms of the condition include jaundice, delayed growth, and ulcers that vary in individuals. The incidence of sickle cell anemia in Nigeria, according to the World Health Organization, is among the highest in the world, with about 150,000 children being born each year with the disorder. To know individual genotype, a blood test is needed, but while some individuals take the initiative to know their status, which scientifically never changes, the issue of misdiagnosis is a sore point that needs to be addressed. Adequate and reliable laboratory diagnostic facilities. We still see a lot of people diagnose AA when they are AS, etc. And they're thinking of introducing newborn screening so that at the time you deliver your baby you can tell whether the baby has sickle cell anemia or not with modern treatment and good research and putting funding there there's no reason why we cannot improve their quality of life and their longevity bone marrow transplant is the only known cure for sickle cell disease transplants are complex and risky procedures that are not readily available in Nigeria. Bone marrow transplant is the nearest thing we have to a cure. It's been done in Benin, but it, again, it's very selective. It's not everyone who's um, a good candidate for the procedure. And usually you capture them between the ages of 2 and 16. After 16 years of age, doctors will not want to touch um, the, the patients. But um, again, the challenge is, of course, um, it's always money. Because it's a very expensive um, uh, venture. They've been able to do only two in two years and you can imagine the long list of people waiting. So that's not really um, the way to go. We need to do more and right now uh, there's a centre coming up in Luth that's purpose-built for bone marrow transplant. Doctors and nurses were sent from Luth to Italy okay. where they work with us. For 33-year-old Henry, who doesn't want his identity revealed owing to some form of stigma attached to sickle cell disorder, the recurrent pain and complications 
caused by the condition can interfere with many aspects of the patient's life, including education, employment, and psychosocial development. Living with sickle cell disorder has, has been a challenge, and um, I, I dare say I have more ups and downs. I have had all kinds of tough conditions, and even recently I'm having something called AVN, avascular necrosis, whereby blood doesn't get to the hip, and then the hip bone begins to die, and then walking, bearing of weight on that waist region is difficult. Now, some of these conditions can be very expensive to manage, but the management as a whole is really getting better. Now we have a lot of drugs. We have paludrine, a regular daily malarial drug, anti-malarial drug that can actually help people take away that malaria infection. Then we have the regular folic acid. So if anybody is having these conditions and he sticks to these drugs, sticks to regular drinking of water, sticks to um, balanced diet, yes, um, you have a better chance. And then um, first and foremost, understanding the parents has the responsibility to try and understand the child. Because when they do that, they will understand what stress would bring about a crisis. A crisis is that period whereby the child has various complaints ranging from bone, back, joints and all that. What role is stigma, stigma playing in when it comes to sickle cell disorder? Well, um, there's a whole lot of stigma. I have, I have a friend who her parents rejected somebody because um, the person is um, SS. Uh, I have male, I have female friends, I have male friends also, who they've, their parents have kicked against SS. And even when they are SC too, nobody wants to come near them. They are like a leprous person. And um, even work, if you are employing for a job somewhere, a lot of people have been turned down. You know, but they, they may not get to be told straight away that we don't want a sickler here. Maybe it's because um, they don't want you to work less hours, they don't want you to come on less regular days and all that. And it's so... so what, what do you think the society can do in this regard? Wow. Um, I think the onus is actually on the media houses. Because the media houses need to correct every negative impression. If you have sickle cell disorder today, you have a higher chance of survival than, let's say, a decade ago. Medicine has in improved considerably, and um, the media houses just need to send a message to parents. If you have a child who is this, don't abandon that child. Um, look, look into the child, research into the condition, because management sometimes is not as expensive as you may think it is. And um, emotional support, because I've gotten to realize that some people get crisis more when they are emotionally um, predisposed to certain things that happen in their lives. And of course, there is a stress factor. If you have um, sickle cell disorder, it's, it's best you minimize stress. Take a lot of water, and um, that's basically it. Thank you so much. Uh, Thank you. Thank you.